Hello friends, in this video we're going to be talking about the Gaussian blur. We will be focusing on the problem of improving a very noisy image with a Gaussian blur. But first, let's talk about what the Gaussian blur is. So the Gaussian blur is named after a mathematician called Carl Friedrich Gauss. The Gaussian blur is an application of a mathematical function to an image in order to blur it. And it smooths uneven pixel values in an image by cutting out the extreme outliers. So if you remember in my other videos where I try to enhance edges, that was a high pass filter. For low pass filter, it's the opposite. You're trying to reduce the, the sharpness of an image. So when do you use the Gaussian blur? If you take a photo in low light and the resulting image has a lot of noise, the Gaussian blur can mute that noise. You can also use the Gaussian blur to make objects or text stand out more clearly. All right, here we are in Pixelmator Pro. As I've said, we're going to be using the Gaussian blur to reduce image noise. We're going to be using the same image which we used in my video on reducing noise with Affinity Photos live masks. Through this, we're going to learn how to use some of the tools of Pixelmator Pro as well. First question you may ask is, why do we even need to use the Gaussian blur to reduce noise? Doesn't Pixelmator Pro already have a denoise function? So let's try out the denoise function now. So to access the denoise function, you just go into format, click noise, and there you go. So this is the denoised image. So I'm already zoomed in, so you can see the noise a little bit clearer. I don't know if it's visible in your screens, but to my eyes, there really isn't much of a difference in the effect of the denoise function. But the denoise function doesn't really work very well in general and certainly doesn't work with heavy noise like this. And in case you didn't know, this thing is a raw file. So it has a ton of data with which the denoise function could use to remove the noise and recover the detail. Alas, it cannot do the job, and that's why we're going to use the Gaussian blur filter. Before I proceed further, I'm just going to duplicate this layer, and I'm going to explain why I'm duplicating it in a moment. Where do we access the Gaussian blur filter? To access the Gaussian Blur filter, you go into Format, Effects, then Blur, and then just click Gaussian. Right? To do the blurring, you just simply adjust this radius. It's simple as that. And so you want to get rid of all the, the noise as much as possible. You can see how the blurring effect will actually reduce the noise. So that looks really good. But one thing to note when using the Gaussian Blur is that the greater blur intensity results in decreased sharpness. So you might say, how do we recover the sharpness then of the image? So I'm just going to hide this layer first. But what we need to do is to decrease the blur radius for those parts of the image which have a lot of detail. So I'm just gonna duplicate this as well for comparison purposes. I'm just going to hide this layer. All right, so I'm going to do the same thing for this now, but I'm going to use a Gaussian blur with a much lower radius. So once again, I'm going to go into Format, Effects, Blur, then Gaussian Blur. Now this is a little bit too much, so I'm just going to lower this till I can just get just the right amount of blur. All right, so maybe that is, that's good enough. Okay, so very little blur because we want to maintain the details of the image especially for the statue and these glass panes. The wall, not so much. What we want to really do here is to combine the elements of the top layer, which involve the background and is heavily blurred, with the lower layer, which is blurred with a very small radius and has still a lot of detail left. So how are we going to do that? What we're going to do here is create a mask in order to allow both elements to be merged into a composite. To create the mask, I first need to make a selection. Because the colors of the background are very close to the colors of the statue, the quick selection brush is not an ideal way to create our selection. So what I'm going to do is use the polygon selection tool, which will be more efficient for this purpose. Use the polygon selection tool, which will do a better job, make things more efficient. The polygon tool works by clicking on the path to make the selection to form the polygon. So I'm just going to make the selection here like so. Just add the points 
along a path. For this polygon selection, I've actually set it to add. Now, don't worry if you make some mistakes here and there. You can al always refine your selection later on. All right, so there we have our selection. What we're going to do here is just create the mask. So I'm just click on the top layer here, then just right click, add mask. Okay, I'm going to unhide this now. So as you can see, the mask is actually incorrect because the white areas will reveal the top layer. What we want is the white areas, the parts we selected, to reveal the bottom layer. So we need to invert the mask. And to invert the mask, all we need to do is make sure the mask is selected and then just Command I. Or and as you can see now, it is correct. And you can see now the, the background is nicely blurred. If I uncheck the top layer, you can see now how much the noise has been removed. All right, so if you want to refine the mask here, you may do that at any time. It is non-destructive. For example, if you notice in this mask, the, the line here has been obscured because of our blurring. So let's say we want to refine the mask to make sure that the line, which was in the original image, still shows up. What we can do is we can refine the mask. So to do that, we just simply right-click here and just click Refine Mask. It's just choose basic brush here and just paint over those areas where we made an error or we want to correct. Okay, so this is just to illustrate that you can make any sort of modifications you wish. All right, there you have it. So I've just actually just painted over it in order to bring back some of the detail here. All right, so now you can see a little bit more of the line area here. So you can bring back detail in any way that you want, okay, by refining the mask. And so let's just do a final comparison. Let's just zoom in here, right? And this was the before and the after. Before and the after. So I think you can see it's a big difference. There you have it. That's the Gaussian blur demonstrated in Pixelmator Pro. I hope this video was helpful in some way and gives you yet another tool in your arsenal to fix what you thought were unfixable, noisy images in Pixelmator Pro. Oh, do let me know in the comments if you have some other ways to fix noisy images in Pixelmator Pro. I'd love to hear from you and learn from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.